Hello, my name is Krista Petley and I am a professor in the School of Humanities at the University of Southampton. At the University of Southampton, our mission is to change the world for the better and whichever way you look at it, our world is at a critical moment. Once upon a time, there were no humans on this world of ours. The time we humans have walked the earth is a mere blink in the eye of the four billion year long history of our planet. But in a few short recent centuries, human technology has helped the growth and expansion of our species everywhere. We've rapidly turned this earth of ours into a human planet. Before, it took an asteroid from outer space to create extreme and rapid changes to global temperatures. No one species of animal could have done it, but now, just one species, humans, has the power to change the climate or even to destroy life on Earth as we know it. If we humans are going to preserve this world, and if we're going to survive and thrive together as a species on this human-made planet, then the future will also have to be human-made. So, there has never been a better time to study humanity. Now, more than ever before, we have to take a long, hard look at ourselves. What that means is that we have to study the humanities. The humanities are those subjects that examine what it means to be human. And, as stated in a recent report by the British Academy, the humanities are essential to addressing emerging global challenges. That is because, as this report puts it, the humanities give us the tools to examine and explain human behaviour, understand how society functions, learn from the past and apply those lessons to the present. Those tools are just as essential to our survival and happiness as a species as any kind of scientific development or technological know-how. In the School of Humanities at the University of Southampton, we have seven departments. We have history, English, philosophy, languages, film, music and archaeology. All of them are working to understand the human past and present whilst also developing knowledge and skills that are essential to our future. And their work is coordinated by our new Southampton Institute for the Arts and Humanities, or SEA for short. Our work in the humanities at Southampton stretches far beyond the confines of our campuses. For example, our partnerships with artists, writers, organisations and businesses allow us to shape successful futures for our diverse society and for its economy. Perhaps the most obvious way in which we in humanities at Southampton shape the future is by equipping our students with the knowledge, the skills and the confidence that set them on the right path for their careers after graduation. Humanities students are highly employable, finding graduate level jobs at comparable rates to their contemporaries in any other set of subjects. Humanities graduates also underpin key sectors of the UK economy. Of the 10 fastest growing sectors, eight employ more graduates from the humanities, arts and social sciences than from any other disciplines. Moreover, the earning potential of humanities graduates is very good and it has been shown that it improves over the course of their careers. That is partly because humanities graduates also have a uniquely flexible skill set. It's also because their skills are in high demand. The OECD Skills Need Database indicates skills shortages in the UK in areas related to humanities subjects. Those include history, philosophy and archaeology. It is predicted that interpersonal and higher order cognitive skills, along with originality, active learning, collaboration and leadership, effective communication, curiosity and imagination, all essential to a humanities education, will be increasingly in demand, even essential for survival, 
within a changing UK economy. Now, I want to develop those ideas that I've just introduced to you about the importance of studying the humanities as part of making plans for the future. Recently, it's been difficult to plan for the future. Sometimes it seemed hard enough to make sense of the present or make plans for next week, let alone mapping out our lives after lockdown. But what about the much longer term futures for ourselves and for our communities within this world that we're creating? We all need to find ways of getting back to the future, to get back to making plans for what comes next. Looking to the future is quite literally an essential human need. Reflecting together on the past and making plans for the future is part of what makes us what we are as a species. And it involves our greatest superpower, which is the power of story. I mean creating them, telling them and making sense of them. No other animal comes together to tell stories like we do. It is uniquely human, not only because it requires language, also because it requires imagination. Think about it. If you want to tell a story and learn from it, what do you need? At least three things, I'd say. First, you need to be able to communicate with your audience and find a common language. Second, you need to be able to use your imagination to turn the words, the sounds or the pictures into something meaningful. Third, if you really want to learn something from this story, you're going to have to stretch your imagination just a little bit further beyond the story itself and think your way into the future. Altogether, those three things make up the human superpower that I'm going to call story sense. To illustrate what I mean by story sense and how it works, let's take a well-known and simple example, like the hare and the tortoise. The hare brags to the tortoise that she can easily win a race between the two of them because she is fast and the tortoise is slow. They race. The hare, of course, goes off ahead, but her confidence leads her to take a nap and she wakes up just in time to watch the slow but steady tortoise crossing the finish line first. To make sense of this story requires all the flexibility of the human imagination. First, we have to be able to imagine an unlikely world, one in which not only a hare and a tortoise can speak, but also one in which they speak the same language. Get embroiled in a bizarre episode of interspecies rivalry, understand the concept of a race, organise a race and experience a range of feelings from pride and rivalry to confidence and determination through to relaxation and disappointment. But our story sense is so strong that even human kids can imagine that unlikely world. And even kids can learn its lessons. Pride comes before a fall. Slow and steady wins the race. In other words, don't get too cocky and always try your best. Useful lessons for life. Those lessons are part of story sense. That huge gymnastic leap of imagination to convert events in the imaginary world of talking hares and tortoises into lessons for our real world of walking, talking human beings. And it requires us to imagine how we could make use of those lessons in the future by applying them to our own actions and behaviour. So obviously, story sense is not only about entertainment. Rather, we are talking here about the fundamental way in which we humans package up ideas and information for sharing. And we are talking about how we humans process the ideas that we encounter and how we then go about using them to shape the future. Story sense is fundamental to the ways in which religious ideas or political ideologies try to explain the world to us and shape our actions. It is similarly part of spiteful gossip or conspiracy theories. Story sense is also fundamental to the ways in which we share and make use of more positive and truthful types of information like the daily news or the latest research. Imagine that a scientist has developed a piece of technology that will solve an important problem. 
Say that she's invented a cheap piece of tech that will allow an electric car to run for a thousand miles on a short charge. Now, the success of her discovery depends a lot on the science. Does it work? Is it reliable? Is it safe? But the wider significance of it can only make sense to us if our scientist can present to us a good and plausible story. She will need a convincing evidence-based story, not only about how her invention works, but also about the bigger matter of how it will work to improve our human planet by helping to solve our pollution problem. What happens next then depends both on whether we are convinced by these stories and whether we can imagine a future world that has been transformed for the better by our scientist and her technology. If those stories make sense and are well presented, we support the scientist, we fund her research and we buy the resulting products. If not, we don't. Only the humanities truly specialise in story. Over the years, we humans have invented many forms of communication technology to tell our stories. We see them on the page, on the stage or on the screen. They can be put to music or performed through dance. Even the dullest piece of official documentation contains an element of story. To study the humanities at university can mean making sense of any number of types of story. How is a song or a feature film or a novel constructed? Why do some stories, including political narratives, resonate so strongly with particular audiences at certain times and in certain places? How have historians or other writers sifted through the available evidence to tell their own plausible, research-based narratives about particular events or transformations? And how can we present our own discoveries to our audiences? Studying those kinds of questions means making sense of what it means to be human. How do we interact with each other? How do we come into conflict? How do we unite? How do we learn? How do we plan? And what are we capable of? Your work as a humanities student will help you to answer all of those questions. It will also allow you to develop intellectual confidence abstract reasoning, self-reliance, successful planning and effective teamwork. You'll also have to learn how to tell well-evidenced and convincing stories about what you have learned. In other words, you'll have to learn to express yourself well and in ways that not only make sense to other people but that also convince them and even inspire them. Of course, there are important differences between humanities subjects and the one that you choose will depend a lot on your talents and on your current interests. But whichever path you choose for yourself, through an education in the humanities, you will be preparing yourself for the future. I started my story to you in time-honoured fashion with Once Upon a Time, and I told you about our human planet. I have made the case that to understand our world and to confront its problems, we have to study the humanities. Of course, I cannot promise that all of our stories are going to end happily ever after. But I do hope that you'll be inspired to write the next chapter of your own story with us in Humanities at the University of Southampton. If you do, I can guarantee that you'll learn much more than you can even imagine now about what it means to be human. You will certainly discover some of your own powers and potential. And, perhaps, we can try to use all of that to change the world for the better.